The bulk of free agency is over. That means all attention pointed towards the NFL draft. And that means we got to give you another mock draft. Hayden, you said it before we started recording. Lots has changed since our last one. As you all know, teams fill needs. They fill holes, except for maybe one or two. And just miraculously, somehow, those end up being the first two picks in the first two rounds of many teams' drafts. It always cracks me up when people say that, like, don't draft for team needs. Like, that's, like, kind of the point of this whole process. <laughs> and it always happens. So I can sense this consensus building in the top 10 and the top 15. This might be a good year for mm -hmm. predictive mock drafts. So I say we try to get a little bit creative here if we can't throughout the show. Absolutely. I, I always say it's, like, the best player available at a position of need is how these yes. teams should think of it. And really, when you think best grade available, either consciously or subconsciously, need is factored into that when these mm -hmm. general managers and head coaches are building depth charts. Mm -hmm. So just the point blank, oh, we're going to take the best player available stuff. You all know that that is almost totally nonsense. Okay. Sometimes I steer the ship. Sometimes you steer the ship on these mock drafts. Today, we work together. Wow. <laughs> What can go wrong? <laughs> what can go wrong? Uh, we'll do the entire first round, maybe throw out a couple of players for you know the Panthers and the Browns and actually the Houston Texans, mm -hmm. since all three of those teams now do not have first round selections. As always, we use the PFF mock draft simulator. Hayden, no surprise. First overall selection, Caleb Williams and the Chicago Bears. I think the more interesting part is when the Bears sit at ninth overall. They only have four draft picks because the Justin Fields trade only netted out a future conditional draft pick. They traded away their fourth rounder for Keenan Allen. So they have four draft picks. Good news is they've added a lot of talent the last couple uh, off seasons, and then they're going to get Caleb Williams, and he's got an actual serviceable team around them. Let's save the Bears conversation for a little bit later and now go to the Washington Commanders here at pick number two. They had the most cap space entering NFL for agency. They didn't make really a splash signing at all. They brought in just a bunch of dudes. I mean, Bobby Wagner, Frankie Luvu to lock down that linebacker core. Obviously, you bring in guys like Jeremy Chin and Durant Armstrong and Cleveland Farrell on the defensive side. Then the offense, you get Tyler Biotish, Nick Allegretti, Zach Ertz, Austin Eckler, a bunch of guys that have played in Super Bowls or playoff games. So it's a bunch of experience coming to this reworked, reshaped roster. The left tackle, they released Charles Leno. I think that's going to be a spot they're going to have to address at some point here as well. Um, but this is going to be the quarterback pick, the kind of uh, maybe we can play this game where Marcus Mariota <laughs> is a signal that it's going to be Jaden Daniels. Jaden Daniels kind of familiar with the scheme that Cliff Kingsbury works. So I kind of understand if they go with Jaden Daniels ahead of Drake May, I tier them out fairly uh, similarly. I would rather have Drake May because I think there's a little bit more upside long term with him uh but it wouldn't be that surprising if it's Jaden daniels over drake may even if i prefer may uh with my own evaluation yeah maybe some of these picks will definitely turn into conversations this is one because there is this viewpoint that you brought up where does the marcus mariota athleticism play into the cards here or the type that maybe cliff kingsbury and dan quinn mm -hmm. and adam peters are looking for uh, the alternative here, Hayden, is who did the Washington Commanders just trade away? Sam Howell, right? Sam Howell, Drake May played together at North Carolina. Sam Howell, Drake May are great friends. I wonder if the Commanders front office coaching staff would have felt that it could be uncomfortable between these two friends when Howell played above Drake May at UNC and then spend the number two overall pick on Drake May and actually ask him to surmount, to usurp that relationship and then be the dude in that locker room when he already has a good buddy who was the dude in that locker room last season. I feel like they would want their friends to be on the roster. We've seen like the Eagles draft a bunch of guys from the same team. I feel like that I can take this, that same argument to say, totally. well, they got rid of Sam Howell uh, because they're going with, with Jaden Daniels. Yeah, I... Again, I think you can interpret that decision in multiple right. different ways. I also think uh, just saying that, hey, Marcus Mariota is athletic, that right. means that, you know, we're going straight on over to Jaden Daniels, um, is overlooking 
how athletic Drake may and the mobility right. and the uh, scrambling ability that he brings mm -hmm. to the table to. My last note here, this is the basketball analytics, front office, ownership, blah, blah, blah. Jaden Daniels coming off one of the most historic, productive seasons you can possibly draw up in college football. So that's another thing that maybe this ownership sorting by the projections just says, I want Jaden Daniels because of that production last year versus Drake May, who did not have nearly the same supporting cast uh, and is younger, uh, just did not have the same production as Jaden Daniels. So I would make this a slight favorite to Jaden Daniels, but if you want to take Drake May here, I it's a near 50 50 to me my lean is still towards drake may does that mean That's we good. have to go to the third person in producer weaves to split yeah. the tie here let's go producer weaves who do you got drake may it is drake right. may it is Fair okay enough. now pick number three the new england patriots uh hayden they haven't made you know a majority of moves they've brought it back michael and winu who's going to start at their right tackle spot for them they also brought in chooks okor for uh who was a cast off by the Pittsburgh Steelers. We've seen Jacoby Brissett being brought in as the number one backup. Uh, Antonio Gibson, KJ Osborne on offense. This is definitely a selection where trade rumors and rumblings have started. Where do you lean? I've I've always thought like they, they can possibly do the trade down, the Marvin Harrison thing. Jacoby Brissett, I do think, is a fine enough starter for one year, but it's just so hard to be in the spot where you're actually drafting one of the top projected quarterback so i would guess that they're going to take one of the consensus top four guys i also think that some teams are going to rank jj mccarthy like somewhere in the top three mix too do we know if that's going to be the patriots i'm not sure i think that the consensus right now is that Jaden daniels drake may are a little bit ahead of jj mccarthy but i feel that gap closed closing and when i did my entire selection here uh throughout my evaluation i put them all basically in the same tier so i would guess it would be Jaden daniels but i'm not ruling out jj mccarthy either so you're even taking it from it's definitely going to be a quarterback and not a potential trade down that we've seen linked with the Minnesota Vikings, who we'll get to in a moment. I think it's possible. I think it's hard to be in the New England Patriots position totally. where the defense is already good um, and you throw in the quarterback and then you just see what happens with wide receiver position off left tackle position over the next two seasons. Yeah, as much as Nick Rodman wants them to trade out this pick, I would be shocked if yeah. they don't sit here and take a quarterback. So we're leaning towards Jane Daniels here with a third overall selection. Okay. That's it. Pick number four, the Arizona Cardinals losing Hollywood Brown in free agency with no real, you know, effort to bring him back. Let's say what they did do is turn their maybe league worse defensive line into maybe league average by again, bringing in just a bunch of dudes in Bilal Nichols, Tonga, Justin Jones. Uh, is there only one direction that you can see here with pick number four? They took their medicine last year. They traded down. I don't see them doing that again. It's the, some people say the best player in the draft, certainly maybe the best player aside from quarterbacks in this. And it's also a massive team need. They just traded away. Rondo Moore didn't have Hollywood Brown as well. It's uh, Michael Wilson and Greg Dorch. That's not a real wide receiver group. So I think that I would be shocked. Yeah. If it's not Marvin Harrison here, I've seen rumors that Malik neighbors could go ahead, but I think the profile that Marvin Harrison, that true X wide receiver on the outside, fits a little bit better than Malik neighbors who uh, kind of wins from the slot, more explosive type of player love both of them. But I think Marvin Harrison, like this is such a layup to me. Yeah. Today we saw Daniel Jeremiah tweet that it wouldn't shock him if Malik neighbors is the number one wide receiver drafted in this class. Uh, my buddy, Dane Brugler mentioned it immediately after in a quote tweet. Hey, a plus 7,500 ticket in my pocket of Malik Neighbors being the number one non quarterback draft in this class. I would love that if that's the case. But, and as much as, you know, we we watched the Arizona Cardinals documentary last year and we saw Monty Austin Fort working the phones with how many trades they had in last year's draft, I don't think you move off a premier talent. Mm -hmm. That is Marvin Harrison to, uh, maximize who they believe they have at the quarterback position. Cause if you do that, then you are almost certainly taking a lesser talent and just yeah. continuing to build rather than taking a superstar. And it was easier to move down the board when your starting quarterback was projected to miss the first two, three right. months of the season, the overperformed as a team. And now you have your starting quarterback back. So I think they're viewing this as it's time to win football games for the Arizona Cardinals. Pick number five, Los Angeles Chargers. Before we get into the details of the Chargers offseason, should we just input a trade here? 
the, this is where I think the Vikings discussion most yes. likely starts here. So I think we can do that as well. Obviously, the Chargers have wide receiver needs. They have a tackle need as well. And there are some studs. If you do the math on what the 11th and 23rd overall picks are, it basically comes out as the fourth overall pick. There's a little bit of a quarterback premium when you're yeah. trading up the board. So this would make sense. Fifth for 11 and 23. I, I don't think that's enough. Um, I think we should have to offer more if we are the Minnesota Vikings here. I understand what the trade chart is going to say, but let's just look at what the Trey Lance deal was. That deal was the 12th overall pick, a third round pick the next year, and then first round picks in 2022 and 2023. Mm -hmm. So that was three first round picks. Granted, they were in future years, but I don't think just two first round picks in the same year is going to cut it. I think we have to throw in at least maybe next year's first rounder and then get a second rounder in return. Okay. I'm, I'm okay with that. I think the difference is that Trey Lance goes third overall, not fifth overall. And maybe but you're teams... still trading up for a quarterback. Like right. to me, the number one thing is a quarterback trade up and not number three overall. Sure. Yeah. That's totally fine. If it, if it costs this much, that would be a lot, but first for second round picks in the future is kind of whatever. The reason I wanted to bring this up is we get comments from all of you. Thank you for watching. And they really dig the details of trades. I understand that's almost an afterthought of the process that we're going through, right. but I do want to be right by the people mm -hmm. who are watching the video. Okay, there it is. 11-23 and actually the 2025 first rounder. They get the fifth overall pick and a second rounder back in return, which they don't have the, the Vikings next year, a second round pick at this time. I'm guessing that was in the TJ Hawkinson deal, potentially. Yeah. I'm just, yeah. I'm just wondering. Um, okay. Again, this is why the Minnesota Vikings tried to and did obtain that 23 overall selection was for a second move up. We have seen this in the past with, you know, when the Bills went up and got Josh Allen. We've seen it in the past when the Eagles went up and got Carson Wentz. The big difference, and my buddy Robert Mays pointed this out in the Athletic Football Show, those included players in order to move up, right? So you had Cordy Glenn going to the Cincinnati Bengals and the Josh Allen trade in the first move up. You had like a corner in Byron Maxwell, I believe, and another dude uh, going from the Eagle from the Eagles to move up. I believe it was the Miami Dolphins, if I'm not mistaken. So this is paying pick price twice, but they have to do it. Like the Vikings, their entire offseason is geared towards this trade-up. And you have to make sure you get in front of the Giants who are kind of in the mix there totally. as well. The Broncos uh, are don't have a long-term quarterback at 12. The Raiders at 13 don't as well. So this is kind of the spot where you have to lock it in. I'm curious if they have to make this move before the draft or if this is going to be an uh, on-the-clock situation where they kind of have an agreement in place with the Chargers if one, two, three, four goes in the right spot. Because if you do this move now and then all of a sudden another team goes up with the Cardinals, for example, then you would be in a really bad spot. So I do wonder if we make make this move actually on the clock, but they right. kind of make the agreement like next week. Your mention of the Giants, definitely on point. We've heard from beat writers. We've heard from national insiders that they are making calls or kind of working in the shadows of potentially moving on from Daniel Jones at some point, because that contract can be done at the end of this year. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously some moves they made, Drew Locke, uh, some verbiage that John Schneider used that has also been refuted by some um, saying that he was going to compete for the starting job in the Giants. And that's why he left the Seahawks. Interesting. Keeping a finger on the pulse there. Uh, one final question for you. Okay. I'm assuming this is going to be JJ McCarthy throwing in the middle of the field. Kevin O'Connell loves to do that. If Jane Daniels is the selection at number two, Drake may is available at number three. I could see the Minnesota Vikings trading even more to get up to try to get that number three overall selection. However, if it's like this case where Jaden Daniels is the number three overall pick, I don't know if on paper Jaden Daniels fits what Kevin O'Connell wants to do in that offense as much as a Drake May mm -hmm. and then J.J. McCarthy in terms of attacking certain areas of the field. Yeah, I completely agree. It's still going to be very tough for them to get all the way up to three in my opinion, though. Totally. I just think that they would try more if it is yeah, Drake okay. May versus Jaden Daniels, which not necessarily an indictment on Jaden Daniels' talent. They just, you know, throw different areas of the field. Okay. Mm -hmm. Pick number six. Here we are with the New York Giants. Huge disappointment for this team last season uh, in free agency. 
New York Giants brought in Jermaine Illuminor at right tackle, John Runyon at right guard, Aaron Stinney at left guard. Again, there was a huge weakness last season with all those injuries. You keep Andrew Thomas, you keep John Michael Schmitz, who's a second-year player at center, and hopefully you have a front five here for either Daniel Jones or Drew Locke. I think it's just going to be the wide receiver, the address, the edge rush depth. They got, I think, a great deal in the Brian Burns uh, trade, but now it's between Malik Neighbors and Roma Dunze. Between the two of them, Roma Dunze, more of the X wide receiver profile. I do think Malik Neighbors could easily do that, but I think that Roma Dunze makes more sense for the Giants. They already have Wandale Robinson and Jalen Hyatt. Those two guys uh, are like 180 pounds. I think you want the size in Roma Dunze. Let's go there. Pick number seven now. The Tennessee Titans. There was this debate. We brought it up last time with Brian Callahan, his history with the uh, with the Cincinnati Bengals on do you go with the wide receiver or do you go with the offensive lineman? And while the wide receiver they brought in was 29 years old in Calvin Ridley, I think that does point us in the direction of a position that they did not focus on in free agency at all. That is left tackle because they did fill the center position with Lloyd Cushenberry. They also just straight up release Andre Dillard. So like oh. they don't they don't have a left tackle right now. So this to me is definitely going to be Joe Alt. Um, the other tackles are right tackles potentially. I don't think that Troy Futanu would go this high. I think that Joe Alt uh, at six foot eight uh, is bringing a lot to the table uh, for Brian Callahan to work with. Pick number eight. Here we are with the Atlanta Falcons. In previous mocks, they had been linked to the quarterback position. That is not going to be the case moving forward after making a huge deal for Kirk Cousins. Uh, they did add Darnell Mooney. They did add Rondell Moore in a trade. Uh, they didn't really bring in anyone on the defensive side of the ball. Is this going to be our first defensive selection here? Or is this like a trade out team potentially looking up for Malik Neighbors? If you want to get crazy here, I got a Malik Neighbors, I think, is going to be viewed as a top five prospect on a lot of boards, especially the teams that already have the quarterback spot filled up. How about a crazy one? The Cincinnati Bengals. Wow. They need a slot wide receiver. That's where <laughs> Malik Neighbors goes. It's the LSU pipeline. T. Higgins is on a oh franchise contract gosh. right now. You keep him for this year. You have the best three wide receiver set you can possibly dream up. When T. Higgins walks the following season, now you have your one-two combo again, Malik Neighbors and uh, Jamar Chase. This would be awesome to see. It would make the Bengals uh, really high up in the Super Bowl odds, and they're all in this year. What's a more all in move than trading up for a top five player? They have the best one two combo at wide receiver for the foreseeable future. Okay, I don't think I can do that because I believe the Chargers could be a better position, and they're at pick number 11 now and have far up. more draft capital to move up. Uh, I understand that people are might make the the tangent of well they just trade away Keen Allen they're not bringing back Mike Williams they don't want wide receivers or they could just be wanting to get younger and faster at the mm -hmm. wide receiver position and Malik Neighbors definitely fits that okay yeah I'm I'm down with Malik Neighbors to the Chargers and with the Chargers for example and thinking about it from the Atlanta Falcons angle if we do want them to take defense Chicago Bears might take a defensive player but maybe you know the Falcons have two that they have their eyes on and we set, definitely don't think that the New York Jets right now are taking defensive players so you're really not right. missing anyone or you're not missing both of your targets and there's corners or edge rushers there defensive tackles as well I will say if there is not a trade partner, I do think that Atlanta Falcons could consider Malik Neighbors. Like the Darnell Mooney, you can keep him inside outside. Same thing with Malik Neighbors. And then Rondell Moore goes to the bench. I don't think it would be the craziest thing if the Falcons stayed back and drafted Malik Neighbors as well. Now that we know that it's going to be Kirk Cousins in this three wide receiver set offense, and you can boogie once again. But I do think that this is kind of the underrated trade down spot because the Falcons need defense. And I think the, the teens is where all the best defensive players are going to go. So in this deal, why don't we do 11 and 37, but then they get back eight and they get back 74. So it's basically a drop from 37 to 74 gets them up three spots from 11 to eight. Sounds, sounds about right. Okay. And then we'll use that selection to draft Malik neighbors to the yes. Los Angeles chargers who they might've just selected if they sat at pick number five. Yes. Yes, definitely. Joe Hordits just wheeling or, Joe Hortiz just wheeling and dealing already. Okay, pick number nine. Here we are with the Chicago Bears uh, back where we were with the number one overall selection. They have made a 
number of moves during the offseason. Keen Allen brought in Coleman Shelton at center, DeAndre Swift at running back, Kevin Byard at free safety. All three top wide receivers are gone, so we can't make a big trio out of that. Where do you want to head in this direction? I think the Chicago Bears are also a trade down spot. If a team needs to go up ahead of the Jets, for example, for an offensive tackle, I do think that would potentially make some sense as well. If a team really loves Brock Bowers, besides the positional value point, maybe that's a spot. If they do stay back and pick, I do think they'd still need another edge rusher yeah. next to Montez Sweat. Also, a defensive tackle could be in play if they wanted to. They can try to upgrade at left tackle too, but they've kind of uh, hit the, the jackpot. Uh, over there as well. So I think they, they would want to trade down. Is there a player still on the board worth trading up? Maybe so. Maybe somebody loves Dallas Turner or Quinion Mitchell or something like that. But I think if they stay back, I think it would probably be uh, edge rusher for me. Okay, so should we go Dallas Turner? Probably. We'll go with that to pair with Montez Sweat, who obviously received a big deal. They did bring in Jacob Martin, who has shortened his name to Jake Martin. Uh, learned that during free agency this offseason, too. Okay. okay, here we are, the New York Jets and pick number 10. We always love when teams fill needs during free agency and leave gaps in other areas. And maybe no team did that more than the New York Jets, bringing in Tyron Smith at left tackle, bringing in Morgan Moses at right tackle, bringing in John Simpson at left guard. A huge sticking point for this roster last year was our offensive line. And they seem to have filled it. So, Hayden, I would say that this gives them a number of directions they can go in here. A lot more versatility and flexibility now. I don't think this completely rules out an offensive tackle. We're talking about 33-year-olds yeah. and one-year deals for these and guys. guys. that have missed time, too, over right. the years. So, I do think somebody like Troy Fotano would make some sense because he can play left tackle or kick in to one of the guard spots. And I think that he can compete with any of those starters that you brought in. Uh, also, I think Brock Bowers would make some sense. Uh, Tyler Conklin, I think, is a fine starter, but we've seen uh, this kind of tree use multiple tight end sets at times. Brock Bowers can kind of line up as a slot wide receiver, if you will. I also think if we want to get creative, Brian Thomas, last time I checked, is 6'3", 209, ran a 4'3", 3, 3 yeah. with 17 touchdowns and a young early declare from the SEC. I wouldn't be surprised if he goes ahead of Brock Bowers if we want to fill that wide receiver spot because the number two wide receiver currently right now is like Alan Lazard. So Brock Bowers and Brian Thomas Jr. make some sense, but I also will not completely rule out offensive tackle despite the free agency uh, acquisitions. This is a tough debate because Brock Bowers has been mentioned among the top of the draft for a very long time. He's done nothing this entire draft process. In fact, Georgia just had their pro day, and he's going to have to have a personal pro day later on because I believe of a hamstring injury measured in light, not as tall as others, so on and so forth. Now, does that take away from what we have seen over the last two years when he's you know, their number one pass-catching target, when he can be used as a wide receiver slash tight end hybrid, so on and so forth? Um, I am right there with you where you also mentioned offensive line and while these can kind of be short-term deals is a long-term answer and where joe douglas wants to invest really his draft capital which is in the trenches mm -hmm. um should we head in that direction i have no clue in this dynamic um i am leaning brock bowers because again it feels like this offseason uh making aaron Rodgers happy is a focal point of that and they're also one of these teams that is being mentioned with mike williams and some other pass catchers very different than brock bowers but still brock bowers can be utilized and obviously we've seen tight ends and receiving ones at that flourish with aaron Rodgers in the past i, I would not be surprised if brock bowers slides a little bit more than people yes. think like there was like at one point like dalton kincaid was like a lock to be a top 15 pick and then he falls further than that you've seen this before at this position I still think we should go Brock Bowers here, but like I, I think we I think you can get creative if you're a Jets fan. Like there's a lot of players that are now available where previously it was just like give me the best left tackle available. Right. Fuaga, Faltano, depending on which side or which spot you want um mm -hmm. along the offensive line to potentially get that. I mean, it, that's somewhat similar to Elijah Vera Tucker, who's played along that entire offensive line. That's not even missing or mentioning Amarius Mims and Lou Fatano and them. all the I mean, keep going on and on and on. Mm -hmm. We'll get to all those names here in a moment. Pick number 11. The Atlanta Falcons just moved down with the Los Angeles Chargers. We mentioned defense. Is it as simple as heading in that direction with an edge rusher and Jared Verse? I think Jared Verse, but I also think that the corners make some sense. They lose, yeah. they lose Jeff Akuda. We love their AJ Terrell, the number one corner there. We like Jesse Bates, but I think that they can still use plus starters at the other 
uh, secondary spot. So the bigger need to me has been edge rusher. Jared Verse would make some sense. I think it's Latu, Verse, and Dallas Turner as the top three edge rushers, and that's kind of the reason why the Falcons could be a trade down spot because they would even by trading down three to six, seven, eight spots here, you would still be able to get one of these guys. So I would pick Jared Verse here, but I also think that Quinion Mitchell would be very fun. Let's go with Jared Verse. Okay. Denver Broncos, pick number 12. Haven't really been able to do anything this offseason after the Russell Wilson fiasco. Is it out of the realm of possibility that Sean Payton would just say, screw values, screw trade charts. I'm going to take a quarterback that can compete with Jared Siddham. I'm not ruling anything out. I do think that they could pick up some value and I don't see very many other Bo Nix teams. Like once we get to this spot, like maybe the Raiders would pull the trigger, but they just gave Gardner Minshew a decent amount of coin. Um, so I think that we should get the Broncos to trade down. And I think okay. they're actually in a good spot because there's tackles on the board that yep. some teams are going to have top 10. Grades. The New Orleans Saints, I think, are number one on that list who are still looking for a tackle. Sure. I think them. How about the Dallas Cowboys? If the, yep. if the Broncos want to move all the way down, Dallas Cowboys are missing a left tackle massively. They also mm -hmm. lost their center as well. So they haven't done anything in free agency. Is the crazy move for the Broncos to go from 12 to 24? The wow. Dallas Cowboys find their left tackle of the future. Um, and then the Broncos are in a better position to get Bo Nix. I still think if they went to 24, there's really not that many suitors for, for somebody like Bo Nix. So that's kind of the angles I'm looking at is like, how far could the Broncos trade down? Maybe get that extra second round pick. And I think the Cowboys were one of those teams. Okay. So we'll throw in pick number 56 here for, to go from 24 to 12. Might take a little bit more than that in real life, but I do, do like this dynamic because – as you said, I think the Cowboys have only signed one free agent so far this offseason. That is Eric Kendricks at the linebacker spot and losing two key pieces at left tackle and at center. And we don't know exactly what they're going to do with Tyler Smith if they're going to kick him out to left tackle. We know he's been fantastic at left guard. And it might hinge on what they're able to do at pick number 24 or move up. And now they have their pick of the bunch. I mean, again, you can go with Faltano if you want to, who has I would pick him or at left tackle, or you can go with Amarius Mims because we know that the Dallas Cowboys absolutely love uh, some athletes and molding them and grooming them. I think I would want him to pick one of the like straight up left tackles. So either Olu or Troy uh, Fontenot. I, I think I will go with Troy Fontenot. He looked, I mean, it was, he was dancing out there at the combine and okay. he has got a mean streak to him. So um, I think this would be pretty sweet. There it is. Next, the Las Vegas Raiders. I believe they're in a spot where they are content with Gardner Minshew being their quarterbacks. So I don't know if we need a long, extended quarterback conversation here. That might look foolish here in a couple of weeks, but that's just where I'm at at this moment. Which direction are you leaning here for Las Vegas Raiders? They lost their right tackle, and there yep. are stud right tackles. I mean, you pick your poison here. You want to go uh, Fuaga? If, do you want to go Amari I think we Smith? go Fuaga, who I, I think lines up with exactly how Antonio Pierce talks about running his offense, just running over your face. Colton Miller, obviously, at that left tackle spot, has it down. And then maybe we get a DJ Fluker return to the NFL because he signed Did with his team last that year. Was nuts. <laughs> what was He's that? lost like 40 pounds or something. Okay. Um, but yeah, having Fuaga and Colton Miller as your book in right. tackles kind of fits the Antonio Pierce identity here. JC, JC Latham also would make perfect sense for the same reasons. Okay, I think we're on a tackle run because the New Orleans Saints are one of these teams that just, despite investing over and over and over again, haven't totally nailed that left tackle spot. It's Trevor Penning at the moment, and it seems like if you listen and watch Nick Underhill, they are not leaning heavily on the Trevor Penning future here. Um, in fact, he was inactive quite a bit. Last offseason, we do know Ryan Ramchek is returning and Cesar Ruiz and Eric McCoy are the starting centers and right guards. Can I throw out a Marius Mims's name here? At right tackle, would you move him to left? Yeah, I mean, if you talk about athleticism, I mean, where would you want to go with Olu Fashanu? I think Olu makes sense. I'm also okay. not ruling off edge rusher. They need edge rusher help. Yeah, and, but... Uh, they just added Chase Young, so I think that alleviates it. And the left tackle spot makes more sense. Yeah. I mean, they, they just brought in a one-year guaranteed $13 million for, for Chase Young. And those are kind of the two positions that this team has invested heavily in in the first rounds. And right. that was with Sean Payton, and that was post-Sean Payton. So you think it almost seeps into the roots 
of who the Saints are as an organization. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, we'll go with Olu here. Yeah, I think it just makes it at least a little bit cleaner where you're not transitioning him. Okay, pick number 15 here with the Indianapolis Colts. Their name continues to be mentioned with Legereus Sneed. Some, like Pretty Ricky, say that the deal is done. Others, like Adam Schefter on Pat McAfee's show, say that there have been no conversations on the topic. So let's just proceed as if there have been no conversations mm -hmm. on the subject. Which direction you want to go with the Colts here? Let's just go with the 99th percentile athlete in Quinian Mitchell at a team in, or a, a position of need. Like this to me would make total sense to go to the Toledo corner. Uh, I mean, he benched 20 reps and he also runs as fast as you can lit up the senior bowl. Yeah. Uh, everyone loves him. I think this would make perfect sense. And I think maybe one of the reasons why they haven't traded for Legereus need quite yet is because they can sit here. Terry and Arnold could be available. Quinian Mitchell is just the more athletic version of that. And this is a team that loves the traits. So I think that Quinian Mitchell would be yeah. really cool here. Chris Ballard loves his traits at every single position. The only alternative I would bring up is if there is somewhat focus on this offense, you could have Michael Pittman Jr., Josh Downs, and Brian Thomas being your wide receiver trio for Anthony Richardson. Yeah, I mean, I would personally love that. I'm also not ruling that out, and he is the freak uh, athletic trait guy too. So, uh, yeah, Quinian Mitchell, I think, is just a bigger need at okay. corner than it is at Brian Thomas. But, man, I would love Brian Thomas and Anthony Richardson. Okay, Quinian Mitchell from Toledo. The corner is the pick at number 15. And here we are at pick number 16 with the Seattle Seahawks. Been an interesting offseason for them as well, uh, obviously with John Schneider at the helm, but also Mike McDonald coming in. You bring in linebackers Jerome Baker, Tyrell Dodson, safety Rayshon Jenkins, but then you look at the left guard spot, there's no one listed here. You yeah. also bring in Nick Harris, who's an undersized center movement guy coming from Cleveland. You bring in a veteran and George Fant, who almost certainly will be your swing tackle at left and right tackle. So the enter the offensive line is screaming out here. I know that the people love JPJ, but it almost feels like the media loves him a bit more than the NFL types do at this point. Also, centers don't go this high very often. We get like one per year about, and it's usually like the 28th overall pick. And it's like usually to the freaking Ravens. Um, so, my top three needs for the Seahawks are left guard, center, right guard, but those are kind of day two needs. Edge rusher, I also think, is a spot where they need to get better at, and I think that Latu could make some sense here as well. Um, trade down if they really wanted to go with one of these guys, or if, I think like if Troy Fontenu fell, where he played play left tackle, probably not. He would slide in at left guard or something like that. I think that would make some sense, but I think... For now, we got to go to the more position pos positional value, unless you don't think that Abe Luke is going to come back from that injury at right tackle. Could we also do J.C. Latham? I know the trench warfare guys have, and they don't love tackle to guard conversions because they think it's almost an insult at times to offensive linemen, even though as we've seen, guards get heavily paid now. And if they're just better at that position, they're going to get paid more in the future. But they mentioned that J.C. Latham might be best as a guard than he is as a tackle. I, and yeah, I don't think that we should like make Abe Lucas a third round pick who was good as a rookie, like a guaranteed starter either. I I think we can because I think he played really well during his rookie year. I know rotation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think in this case, we could have Charles Cross at left tackle, Abe Lucas at right tackle, and then JC Latham, an Alabama dude, filling in one of those guard positions. Yeah, that, that's well, fine with me. Jacksonville Jaguars pick number 17. They tried to bring Calvin Ridley back. Their plan almost worked. That's the case. Hayden, are they going to continue to look for wide receivers when we still have plenty on the board here? Yes, they definitely can go. Brian Thomas, uh, A.D. Mitchell, I guess, would be in play here. Terry and Arnold, though, is a big position of need at cornerback. Um, and I think that he's just as highly rated as like Brian Thomas is. So what's your lean? I would think Brian Thomas and in a weird way, Gabe Davis might fill a similar role on this offense. With that said... Ronald Darby was brought in as very much just like a veteran presence in that cornerback room to play opposite a very good Tyson Campbell. Um, let's go Terry and Arnold. Yeah, that's, what I, that's what I'm leaning towards yeah. as well. Let's go Terry. I hate though. I mean, again, I understand from how this draft class is projected that it's all wide receivers and we'll get to a lot of these wide receivers. Do you think that there's a pretty big difference between the top three and everyone else? Um, at the same time, we should advertise this draft class as loaded with offensive linemen. And I only want to say that because of how many offensive linemen have gone so far versus mm -hmm. how many wide receivers have been drafted so far. 
And if the goal is to just replace Zay Jones, I think you could do that with your second round pick with this wide receiver class. Okay. Pick number 18, the Cincinnati Bengals franchise tag on T Higgins. You get Jamar Chase. You wanted them to trade up for Malik Neighbors. Could they just draft Brian Thomas here? <laughs> uh, they easily can. They also need right tackles. Yes. Like they don't They don't have one, period. So uh, who, who's still available here? A right tackle? Well, Amarius Mims, Mims is right yeah. there. I mean, that'd be pretty sick. Okay. Let's go with Amarius Mims from Georgia. If I remember correctly, um, Cincinnati typically goes for uh, big program dudes in the first couple rounds of NFL drafts. Um, Amiris Mem certainly fits that small sample size in terms of his snaps, but just body type athleticism. I think teams might be able to get over 297 and 383 snaps over the last two years, uh, when they go and watch him. Um, okay. Amiris Mims is the pick pick number 19, the Los Angeles Rams, Aaron Donald retires. Damn. I see DI, I see DI. Uh, next to Byron Murphy and Jerzon Newton's name in the top three available, according to PFS Mock Draft Simulator. They also can go edge rusher here, but yeah, I think Byron Murphy would make a one-for-one -one replacement. Uh, luckily, they already at least hit on Kobe Turner last year totally. in the third round, but you need multiple of them. And I think that Byron Murphy, uh, as you can see, he's ranked number nine on PFF's board. Uh, I think this would be a pretty good uh, start to replacing Aaron Donald, even though that's basically impossible. Yeah, and this was one of those teams that, you know, if they went in a different direction in for agency and didn't bring back Kevin Dotson or didn't bring in Jonah Jackson, then you could consider mm -hmm. offensive line here. But those have obviously been solidified. Really, the entire offense has been solidified. I think left tackle, they found this UDFA, Alaric yeah. John Johnson came out of nowhere, but I think you could go left tackle just given like how quality these left tackles are. But uh, the rest of the line, I think is like locked and loaded. He played well last year. Yeah. And, and you might be able to get with one weakness along the offensive line. And to that point, they wanted Joe Newpoom to have that position after Andrew Whitworth and he's dealt with injuries and maybe not as big of a caliber play, but maybe from their front office standpoint, they believe that, Hey, one of Alaric Jackson and one of Joe Newpoom is going to keep our left tackle stable mm -hmm. throughout the season. Yeah, I'll lean defense oh. tackle. So Byron Murphy over Jerzon Newton. Uh, I don't have any takes on either okay. of them. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Not yet. I think I think Newton is pretty sweet to watch. Okay, I believe you. Let's go with Newton. Okay, Pittsburgh Steelers are here at pick number twenty. Uh, they traded away Deontay Johnson. They have a massive need at wide receiver after cutting Allen Robinson. Also, it's basically George Pickens and Calvin Austin. And that's it for Dan a team Jefferson. that has for a team, Smith loves them <laughs> for a team that has hit on wide receivers so consistently. I'm sure someone in that building who has the secret recipe, the the magic sauce in terms of wide receiver evaluations is uh, licking their chops in this class. Yes. Does that mean they're going to go with them in round one? Uh, they don't have a center. They don't have a offensive tackle. Broderick Jones gives them versatility at left tackle or right, right tackle. So I think like this is when like the Jackson powers Johnson conversation could start that I think one of the left tackle or right tackle prospects would also make sense for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And if they don't like them, I think Brian Thomas certainly makes sense. So I'm not sure if there was a center or offensive tackle uh, that stood out to you over Brian Thomas, but uh, you know how much I love Brian Thomas as well. I think we should just go Brian Thomas. I mean, okay. at some point, this wide receiver run has to begin. I know JPJ is right there in Jackson Powers Johnson, but man, let's bring in up Brian Thomas and have some type of effort for Russell Wilson on these vertical shots with George Pickens mm -hmm. and Brian Thomas on those spots. Yep. Perfect scheme fit. Uh, next is the Miami Dolphins, a team that has so many offensive line issues because of players that they've had to lose in free agency. They did bring in Aaron Brewer, who's more of a movement center during his time with the Tennessee Titans, and that fits what they have. Teron Armstead is coming back at left tackle, uh, but they just lost their right guard in Robert Hunt. Um, so, and they brought back Isaiah Wynn, but he has been obviously hit or miss with injuries over the last few years. So is this an easy offensive line selection here, or do we go in a different direction? Because they also have injuries along their edge rushers. Um, because of the Jalen Phillips and Bradley Chubb issues towards the end of last season. They also lost Christian Wilkins. So Byron Murphy can do some Christian yeah. Wilkins things as well. So I think that would be like a one for one replacement. Um, yeah, it's hard, like drafting a guard here, you're kind of projecting that they're going to kind of fit there. Um, so I think probably go guard in the second round. And I think that Byron Murphy 
falling to 21, I think that you can say this is our Christian Wilkins replacement. I don't think we can go Jackson Powers Johnson here because Aaron Brewer used to play guard and wasn't working out there. His move to right. center kind of settled his career. So I don't think you can move one of those pieces to mm -hmm. guard here. So you want to go Byron Murphy to fill in for Christian Wilkins. I like that. I like that too. I have a team that needs to trade up for an offensive lineman. Should we allow the Philadelphia Eagles to move back here? Yes. I always struggle with who to mock for the Eagles because they've pretty much filled all their needs. <laughs> yeah. And they're very good at that. And so in that case, maybe Howard Roseman wants a bit more draft capital. The team I believe needs to trade up in this spot is the Green Bay Packers. The great Justice Mosqueda. Minus 800, the Packers take an offensive line <laughs> at 25. Um, we know that the Packers have their thresholds if athletic testing. And really, I mean, this is shocking. And again, RAS, RAS is an imperfect uh, composite score for athleticism. But the lowest player that they've taken in terms of athleticism in the top three rounds, you want to guess who it is over the last five years? Oh, man, it's, it's probably still in like the eights or something like that. Well, no, it's in the sixes, but it's Jaden Reed, who is the yes. very, very, very good athlete. So most of their guys are in the eights or the nines or even close to tens in that regard. So let's move it on back to the mock draft simulator. Uh, obviously, we give 25 for 22. Have we moved from 41 to 53? And then you also give them pick number 88. <laughs> I love it, Josh. Great <laughs> trade. <laughs> The Packers have a ton of picks, so mm -hmm. I, I would not be surprised if we see Goody get a bit aggressive in moving up. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case here, to me, the offensive lineman that stands out is Graham Barton from Duke. Dude, this guy is a mauler and very versatile. Could play left tackle, could play center, could play one of the guard spots. So, yeah, this one checks every box. I agree. Okay, next. I'll send this Chargers. Pick number. 23. This is in the deal that we had for the Minnesota Vikings that was previously owned by the Cleveland Browns. So at the top of the draft, we had them moving back up for Malik Neighbors. So here at pick number 23, who stands out to you? I mean, this could be a Jackson Powers Johnson yes. spot. It could be also a right tackle. But I think we've uh, kind of sold all the right tackles off here. So I think, yeah, JPJ, I think would make plenty of sense here yeah they just brought in bradley bozeman who was the center for the Panthers the last two years uh he is more of a gap blocker than he is on the move and zone and that could fit uh what greg roman wants to do but almost certainly that is insurance a guy that's played center and guard in his career and not necessarily the starter because we know what's happened to Corey lindsley over the last few years so jpj here uh and really filling two awesome needs for the team both at center and wide receiver the other name I will pitch here is Cooper DeGene. He's coming off of an injury, so I think that he could slide versus where like PFF has him graded, but they don't right. have cornerback spots. And obviously, playing in Iowa, he's super physical, super versatile. I know that Harbaugh would like that type of profile. So if it's not one of the offensive linemen, I do think corner is the big glaring need now that we've kind of figured out that the edge rushers are filled up. We have We've already drafted Malik Neighbors. The corner spot is the kind of missing piece in the Chargers conversation. So which direction do we want to go in? I mean, Cooper DeGene, excellent tackler. That matters so much with shorter passes now in the league. If you miss your tackle, then you're giving up a big explosive play. Um, both are needs for this team. Let's go Cooper DeGene. Ooh. I think a lot of people are going to keep mocking the Chargers with offensive alignments. So let's, let's throw a little curveball. We had Dallas moving up for the 12th overall selection. That means here we are once again with the Denver Broncos, adding a few more picks, which helps them. So I asked you this question once again. <laughs> Will Sean Payton really sit back and not take one of these quarterbacks? They attempted to sign Sam Darnold. They lost a bidding war for him to the Vikings. They also were looking at players like Jacoby Brissett and all of these guys. They struck out at all of them. Their only quarterback right now is Jared Stidham. That is just not enough to me. Bo Nix, I do think in worse quarterback years, would be kind of viewed as potentially a first round pick kind of in the Kenny Pickett ish mold kind of range. I think that Bo Nix gets the ball out very quickly and he has a little bit more athletic traits than people want to give him credit for. And I could see Sean Payton saying, look in our rebuild year, we didn't have any money. We weren't able to bring any, any free agents. We don't even have our own second round pick because they traded for me, the head coach. Uh, let's go see what Bo Nix has in kind of a lost year. And if he's not it, then we kind of move into 2025 and play this game over again. 
Yeah, I mean, again, at the end of this deal, the Broncos do have picks 24, 56, 76. I cannot sit here and see Sean Payton being like, oh, from 56, we'll see what quarterback is there or moving up from 56 and 76 to go get a guy. Yeah. If they make this deal to move into the back of half of round one, I understand a lot of the moves that the Broncos have made in the last, this last all season uh, might look like patience and process and all that type of stuff that we're voting for the future. That can't be the case. Like yeah. he wants to win. He is not going to sit through a long rebuild here. And I yeah. think that starts and I'm almost assuredly he falls in love with a quarterback every single year. Let's go with Bo Nix. Let's do it. We should have a Bo Nix video posting on the channel this week, along with prospect videos all over the board, quarterback, wide receiver, and running back. Again, a few handshakes go through. Those start up this week, so be sure to hit that subscribe button and the thumbs up down below. Okay, here we are. Philadelphia Eagles after the trade back with the Green Bay Packers. Eagles have one of the best rosters in the league. Which direction do you think they might look at at pick number 25? They have a million edge rushers. Some of them are undersized, so I think that Layatu Latu would make some sense, more of a power guy. Uh, they kind of filled up their corner and safety needs as well. The offensive line... They have this game where they have Landon Dickerson, Cam Jurgens. They can play guard. They can play center. They are willing to move one of them into center, most likely Cam Jurgens. Or you can keep Cam Jurgens at guard and then draft Jackson Powers Johnson. That to me is one of the biggest needs. Is just one of the interior linemen starting spots. I think that's kind of one of the paths to go. So I think that Jackson Power, Powers Johnson and then keeping Cam Jurgens at right guard could be a, a possibility here. Yeah, I kind of hate all of the options here, to be honest with you, because. You mentioned edge rusher. I think they have it settled and they will move Hassan Reddick at some point because mm -hmm. they brought back Josh Sweat on a restructured deal. They brought in Bryce Huff. Um, Brandon Graham is coming back for one last run. And then you have Nolan Smith who dealt with shoulder injuries last year who should be part of a heavy rotation here. So that's four names. That's four names right. at edge rusher, right? Um, then the long-term plan, as you said, was moving Cam Jurgens from guard to center once Jason Kelsey, who seemingly was a part of the Cam Jurgens evaluation, moved on. They do not have a right guard. Totally with you. But I don't know if we can draft an interior guy and move him to center and keep Cam Jurgens back at right guard. That's where he's, that's where he's playing, though. I mean, it, it, it was. It's, it's, it's an option. And just like you said, the Eagles have so many good players already. Um, that's like this is kind of a, a position of need like why, why isn't why isn't corner more of a question like i know they brought in chauncey gardner johnson who's played really multiple safety positions not just in the slot but we've also seen him as a deep safety depending on which situation he has landed in because it almost is assuredly that darius slay and james bradbury in the final years of their contract with the philadelphia eagles this year i think they can definitely go that spot as well. They have Sydney Brown that, that can play at safety too. So I wonder if they are just thinking that uh, Chauncey Gardner Johnson is going to play kind of like that nickel role. But if they want to look for the future, I do think that one of the corners uh, does make sense. I don't think that Cooley McKinstry would get that many snaps as a rookie, but we've seen the Eagles draft players that play 200 to 300 snaps right. in the first round uh, and kind of build for the future. So I think that one of the corners makes some sense or interior linemen. Yeah. Again, your lineman point does align with where Howie Roseman spends his first round draft picks on. Um, but man, I don't think they would take Nate Wiggins based on, you know, thresholds and body types and all that type of stuff with just the weight that he brings to the table. And I think Kool-Aid McKinstry is more of a likelihood here. Okay. I'm open to it. Okay. Let's go with corner. Next, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who might have taken a corner. Uh, <laughs> if if they if one was still left on the board because Tampa Bay Buccaneers trade away Carlton Davis. Right now, it's really just Jamel Dean, Zion McCollum is on the opposite side. They did bring in Bryce Hall. They filled out their safety room, obviously, and they did bring in Tavier Thomas. But where are we looking here for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? I think Nate, Nate Wiggins would make some sense here. Like I, I can see the Bucs kind of taking a chance here on the size uh, problems just because he is so fast and... Uh, Nate Wiggins, kind of before we saw the weight, we, he's kind of more like the top 15 to top 20. So him sliding a little bit because of the weight makes some sense. And also he runs, I mean, so fast and long yeah. that there's like still some advantages to him. I think that interior offensive line could also be in play here. That's one of the reasons why the Bucks were uh, so bad. Can um, I throw in one more? Yeah. Edge rusher, because 
Shaq Barrett is now departed. It's Joe Tryon Shoyenka, and that's about it. You do have Anthony Nelson as a rotational guy. We know that Kalijah Kansi had a fantastic rookie season. I could see them taking Layatu Latu here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that totally makes sense as well. Uh, Latu could fall because of some medical concerns with him. Um, so, yeah, this would kind of like the range for him, in my opinion. Okay, let's go with Latu. Pick 27, the Arizona Cardinals. Where should we look here? We mentioned them earlier, taking Marvin Harrison Jr. That wide receiver slot is filled, or is it? Could we double up here at wide out? That would be pretty interesting. I, they also need edge rush help. Uh, they were 28th in ESPN's pass rush win rate they need corner spots as well um so those are the other options um which wide receiver would you be looking at i mean there's a number all of them are still left you have ad mitchell you have Vlad mcconkey you have troy franklin do you think you're worthy what about like someone like chop robinson i mean i I think that chop Mm. robinson is going round one you know Mm. i think they would prefer size um so like lotu would make some sense for the cardinals but they they need some edge rush help. And like this is the same organization that comes from Philly. So I wonder if they want to go defensive line again. Yeah. I think what you're saying does make sense where right now you have Zaven Collins, who, you know, was a converted inside linebacker to edge rusher. You have Dennis Gardeck, who is all effort all the time. They did spend a second round pick on BJ Ojolari last year. And as I mentioned, like all of their investments have been on just guys to go from awful to like slightly below average Mm -hmm. along that defensive line unit. So you think chop Robinson has a real chance here? Yeah, I think chop Robinson's going round one. In fact, if there was like a surprise top 20 draft pick that kind of came out of nowhere, I would not be surprised if it's somebody like chop Robinson. I mean, it's just hard to find that amount of burst and from Penn state as well. I think there's just precedent here that this is the type of profile that still goes round one. And I think the Cardinals need this spot and their coaching staff comes from places where this was a huge investment usually. Okay, pick number 28, the Buffalo Bills are on the clock. This team lost Gabriel Davis. They did add Curtis Samuel. Uh, Unfortunately, we did not have an individual video for Curtis Samuel. We just ran out of time, folks. We just (laughs) ran out of time. I love the fit. I'll get into that in a moment. Uh, This is a very, very good roster, but they've also lost, obviously, their safety duo. which direction should we lean here? They lost Mitch Morris as well. If yes. you just want to go one for one replacement with Jackson Powers Johnson. So it, it did sound like that the plan was to move Connor McGovern to center and then have David Edwards, who they picked up from the Los Angeles Rams play left guard. But like yeah. those were the pre draft plans. We'll see if that sticks throughout yeah. the draft. That, that's not, that doesn't sound like a plan A to me. You know, <laughs> that sounds like a plan for like March 18th and not like when you have, a, but somebody that people rank in the top 20 kind of fall into your lap. So yeah, they didn't pay David Edwards and Connor McGovern like a whole lot of money here. We're talking about like fringe starters and, and switching positions. I feel like it'd make a lot more sense if David Edwards, your backup and Jackson powers, Johnson's your starter. And then you keep Connor McGovern at left guard. Just to mention here, cause there are a bunch of wide receivers on the board. They gave Curtis Samuel a bit of a bag, which, mm-hmm. you know, I'm in love with uh, my buddy, Billy M refound this tweet. Uh, this is all the way back in 2020. Uh, Joe Brady quote, any kind of success we have is because of Curtis Samuel. So much of what he does doesn't show up on the stat sheet. I mean, when Joe Brady was the offensive coordinator for the Carolina Panthers, DJ Moore, Robbie Anderson, Curtis Samuel, and Mike Davis all had over 1000 yard seasons. I think Curtis Samuel is going to play a major role in this Buffalo Bills offense this season. That season, though, in 2020 with Joe Brady was the highest percentage of snaps Curtis Samuel played in the slot and also the most like manufactured touches like carries and stuff. So when Joe Brady had him, he used him in the slot. So which and you already have Khalil Shakur, you have the tight end stuff like this team to me needs size and vertical speed. And we'll, I'm curious because we've seen Curtis Samuel try to be that role. And I think he can do that. But if you're starting three wide receivers, Steph Diggs, Shakur, and then also uh, Curtis Samuel, I mean, that's that's tiny like as a group I, th- I think he can do everything and you know a big part of his game was actually playing running back at ohio state too and that was early on in his career so i do wonder if anyways uh i think that's a very interesting point that you yeah. made and one that i'm sure we will discuss a lot this summer in terms of where curtis sam was going to be drafted in fantasy football 
Right. So see, if it was one of those types, I think like AD Mitchell would be the profile. Like that's the type of receiver that they don't have here. Not a Xavier worthy types. They are, they've already have enough of that type. So, but I, I do think that just replacing Mitch Morris, why not? Let's go with Jackson powers. Johnson next up the Detroit lions pick number 28, 29, a uh, team that cannot miss in the NFL draft. So <laughs> who is going to be the next superstar that they're drafting right here? Well, losing Jonah Jackson was kind of a surprise to me. Uh, I'm not sure if there's a, a, a strict guard uh, at this spot right here. Edge rusher always is a spot of need, but we've kind of taken all of the top edge rushers as well. Going down my team needs list, X wide receiver. I mean, they already have a bunch of weapons, but yeah. we're basically replacing Josh Reynolds. If you want to really upgrade that spot and throw some crazy firepower at it, you could go A.D. Mitchell or Keon Coleman, one of those types. And then outside corner, uh, that's that spot has become less of a need after they traded for Carlton Davis. Um, they've added some depth as well. And then defensive tackle was my last spot. So well, this is kind of the spot where like these really aren't guaranteed first rounders at this point. Right, so right. They're, they're kind of in a weird spot. They don't have a glaring knee. Um, so yeah, I don't really have a great answer for you. I mean, I do think offensive line is the biggest one when they did bring back Graham Glasgow, but missing Jonah Jackson, who they took in the middle rounds and instantly became a starter for them, was a big deal. Their defensive reshuffling has been fascinating to watch. Uh, having an interior defensive line combination of Ali McNeil and DJ Reader beefs up that front mm -hmm. for sure. They're constantly looking for that other edge rusher because as we showcase in scheme episodes, if you had a plan for Aiden Hutchinson, you basically had a free run of mm -hmm. four offensive line versus three pass rushers and you could win those battles. So like some combination of Marcus Davenport, Davenport, uh, John Kaminsky, so on and so forth is probably their plan there. And yeah, trading for Carlton Davis when Brad Holmes has talked about how picky he is with cornerback yeah. evaluations. And also like the Emmanuel Mosey deal didn't make sense last year in terms of injury, but now they bring him back too. And then Meek Robinson, so on and so forth. So yeah, a number of directions. I do wonder if they if they think that Tyler Guyton could shift in from tackle to guard. I have no idea if that's the case. <laughs> I also look at A.D. Mitchell, I do think would be the very fun yeah. version if we want to go crazy here. I mean, the, he would start in two wide receiver sets and in three wide receiver sets, premier position like it. They've, they've done a good job in this this free agency to kind of plug totally. up the most glaring needs. And this is the point where like, I think these are kind of like round two grades that you draft in the round one. Every yeah. draft analyst loves to say, I only had 18 first round grades, which is always ridiculous to me. And I, I could see teams giving AD Mitchell a first round grade. Sure. Yeah, I think that's totally, totally possible. So that would be um, like kind of the fun version of this. Now, the people out there might say, well, what about Jamison Williams? Why aren't you mis mentioning him with these wide receivers? Uh, I understand that Brad Holmes went up at the NFL Combine and said, we're expecting more from Jamison Williams, so on and so forth. I still would be stunned if he is going to be second in this team in snaps at wide receiver. Yeah, they just need size. It's Josh Reynolds and Jameson Williams just like don't look alike. Well, they need to be more size. Okay, I guess we'll give Ben Johnson the reason why he stayed and go with AD Mitchell here as another wide receiver, even though some interior offensive line help is needed. Here we go. The Baltimore Ravens traded away their right tackle. We know that they are also without Kevin Zeitler, a guard who they might resign. They did do some moving and shaking during last season along their offensive line um, with like Patrick McCarry and Ronnie Stanley at left tackle, who is coming back on a restructured deal. Is this one as simple as, hey, we're going to throw out Tyler Guyton here and say, hey, man, go play some right tackle for us? It is that simple. Okay. <laughs> the Ravens offensive line is no longer a strength. They need to address it. So I think this is a great spot. Okay. There it is. They also might be in the look for wide receivers too. I mean, we looked mm -hmm. at obviously Zay Flowers last year. Odo Beckham is not returning to this team. Uh, really, his involvement in the playoffs was somewhat sketchy. We expected a lot more and that didn't happen. Um, so I wouldn't be shocked if wide receiver is a spot for them. Okay, pick number 31, San Francisco 49ers. Um, once again, they like quietly do their stuff in free agency. Actually, last year, they made some moves. I mean, going out and getting Javon Hargrave. Uh, they did cut Eric Armstead, but filled that in with Malik Collins. They brought in Leonard Floyd as the edge rusher opposite Nick Bosa, along with a little reclamation project in Nitor Gross Matos. Your thoughts on the San Francisco 49ers? I still think the offensive line could be an issue. Um, 
bring back the right tackle, uh, have a center in place. But I would think that those would be some positions of need. Corner has been an up and down position for them as well. I'm not sure if like Nate Wiggins would be a potential spot for him. Um, those are kind I think of they like, care too much about size. Like Traveris Ward is a big dude. Right, right. So yeah, it's just it would be. I mean, maybe Nate Wiggins falls out of the first round completely because of the size. Um, but yeah, like none of these names are like really standing out to me. Like all the the tackles um, are off the board here. I mean, would they get crazy and like think about wide receivers? Like we've seen Debo in so, trade talks like over. Yeah, and over I, again. I, I was going to ask you about this wide receiver conversation. I don't buy for a second that this team is willing to trade Brandon Ayuk. I totally understand Brandon Ayuk's team and Brandon Ayuk wanting a long term deal and getting that as soon as possible. Beyond stunned mm -hmm. if Kyle Shanahan is open to trading Brandon Ayuk. Yes. I think he'd be more open to trading Debo Samuel. I agree with that because there's just more overlap where, where Debo Samuel wins with Kittle and CMC and stuff. I think if you remove Brandon Ayuk from the equation, that gets really tough because like who's winning press man coverage downfield. Um, and those are like the most efficient passes in the entire offense. So like, yeah, if they needed to trade Debo and draft a wide receiver um, or do they just go the easy route and just draft one, one of these offensive linemen? Yeah, I mean, Jake Brindle, despite him only starting for a couple of years, is actually like post 30, I feel like, or late 20s. He's gotten a very late start to his career. Uh, he is super athletic. Maybe we go with Zach Frazier here. I'm okay with that. Yeah, I've, uh, I've always think, thought that the rest of the offensive line needs addressing. Uh, let's go with Zach Frazier. And I wouldn't be totally stunned if Zach Frazier is the first interior offensive lineman off the board if we're talking about him and JPJ. All right, fair enough. Okay, we'll close this out via the mock draft simulator. We'll get to maybe some Carolina Panthers thoughts and some Cleveland Browns thoughts. But pick number 32, the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, they might be trading Legereus Need. Maybe. Yeah, maybe so. <laughs> but maybe not. I would, I would just keep them. Uh, Nate Wiggins obviously would be somewhat of a replacement there as well. Um, the Chiefs also, their corners really love to tackle and stuff. So that could potentially not be the best fit as well. I think that they can still get some size in the wide receiver room if they wanted to go that route, even with Hollywood Brown. Remember, he is on a one-year rental um, left tackle, massive need as well. Huge need. But, I mean, they're already gone. Like, Do you go down a tier and go with Jordan Morgan? They have I mean, the Yale th kid. They have... This team has not kid. been afraid to really like... Because they are always drafting at the end of you know, the first round, mm -hmm. like what we saw last year with Felix, you know, the end of the first round guy from Kansas mm -hmm. state, I believe if I'm not mm -hmm. mistaken. Great um, athlete. Yeah. Great athlete. Um, they're kind of in the spot where they're taking most likely the best second round grade that they have. I think we go Jordan Morgan here. Uh, I think yeah, that, that plugs up the the big need. Yeah. Cause right now Wanya Morris is starting at left tackle for them. Okay. I will save this. Hayden, we have the Panthers selecting at pick 33, pick 39. What combination of players could you see being selected there? They also still need size at wide receiver. Um, it's less of a huge need with the Deontay Johnson trade, but Adam Thielen, Deontay Johnson, uh, I still think like, like someone like Keon Coleman could make sense for the Carolina Panthers. Edge rusher, I think, becomes a massive need. Uh, they lose Brian Burns. Uh, and gross mottos. They've plugged up those positions one for one, but it's still like a pretty big drop. So I think that edge rusher could also be in play. I think linebacker is too. They were whispering around Patrick Queen, could not get that deal done. They did offer Frankie Louvre to come back, and they really didn't fill that linebacker spot with anyone. So Dan Morgan, now general manager, calling the shots true, at that linebacker true. spot. Could totally see Peyton Wilson being one of those picks at 33 or 39. He's got um, some Luke, Luke Keekley to him, doesn't he? Uh, no, I'm not, I'm not saying any of that. I'm not saying any of that. If one of these centers in Zach Frazier or JPJ is there too, because right now the plan is to move Austin Corbett from guard to center, but he has not played a single snap of center in his regular season NFL career. Mm -hmm. So we'll see what direction that goes. I mean, wide receiver makes ton of sense. If AD Mitchell's there, you go Lad McConkey here. Mm -hmm. um, they're also mentioning their name around and I believe bring in Mike Williams and 
both Michael Gallup, those guys, albeit different sizes, basically fill the same role on the offense, which mm-hmm. is downfield contested catch X wide receiver stuff. Um, I think that they would want to do that prior to the draft because then that basically gives them three usable wide receivers. And then that allows them to take whatever guy they want to. It doesn't have to fill a certain body type like Keon Coleman. If they don't have a great grade on Keon Coleman, it could allow them to take a Troy Franklin or mm-hmm. a Lad McConkey or any of those types. You know what I mean? Yep, I agree with that. What about corner? Do you think they feel good about their spot? It's the no. they have, yeah, I mean, they shouldn't. <laughs> like in, they have, like, in theory, like, great players, but yeah. it's just injuries. and. I, I, I would be stunned if one of those picks at 33 and 39 is not a wide receiver. Um, I don't think it has to be 30, not, 33, though. Excuse me. Okay. Yeah. Because there might be, like, one player left that has a first-round grade for them. Yeah, I mean, at corner, they're basically hoping – that J.C. Horn, who in small segments of his NFL career so far when healthy, has played at like a really high level, right. but then he always gets injured and misses long portions of the season. Yeah. And then after that, they did bring in Dane Jackson on basically a one-year contract to yeah. play on the opposite side. Yeah, they could be a Nate Wiggins team, potentially. Yeah, and then at Edge, you know, they signed D.J. Wanham, Chase Young visited them, Jadavion Clowney visited them. So again, if Chop Robinson is there, that could be mm-hmm. a, a name for them, or Darius Robinson, for instance. But I would be surprised if one of those two picks is not a wide receiver. And I think it can be any type. It doesn't have to be just a big body that gets down the field. We basically listed off every single Xavier Leggett, for example. You know, I I think Xavier Leggett could potentially fill there too. How about the Cleveland Browns after free agency? What types of needs do they have on their roster? This team to me is still really good. I think defensive tackle and corner would be the kind of spots I'm looking at. But man, like this team. If they can get Deshaun Watson on track, this team is, really has a lot of good players. Like offensive line is strong, edge rusher strong. Uh, they filled up the linebacker spot, good safety play as well. So I have it as defensive tackle and corner, but they don't pick till fifty eighth overall. So I couldn't even name the defensive tackles uh, available then. Florida State guy would be interesting. Yeah, uh, super athletic. Obviously, the Cleveland Browns love athleticism and athletic profiles on top of that production on top of that too but they just haven't invested much in terms of the draft on into your defensive lineman in the first two rounds but um, i think that might just be like a weird coincidence because that's like <laughs> a that's a huge like position value and totally. this is a team that like loves the other position so yeah um, okay uh, the texans they don't have a first round pick oh, we haven't, right. we haven't hit on them. They, now they drafted at they're at 40 uh second overall with the the trade with the vikings yeah, so the Texans right now have two second round picks, right? Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So they have pick 42, and then they also have pick 59. Uh, they were active in free agency, and outside of Daniel Hunter, who was their big splash play, they just brought in a bunch of solid veterans, which they did the past mm-hmm. season, made the trade for Joe Mixon, already gave him an extension on top of that. Uh, anything from this Texan side, I don't know if I would love to go into the season with Jeff Okuda being my starting outside yes. second corner uh, because his time at Atlanta, if he wants to hit or miss, that's fine. I would just say big miss. Yeah. Defense a tackle. Remember, this is the staff from Tamika Ryans with the 49ers. They bring in defense tackles every single year, draft yeah. them high. So I think defense tackle always in play for them. And then, yeah, I had corner and then slot corner. Desmond King re-signed, but just for $2 million, older player, not a long-term spot there as well. Um, also need strong safety spot, uh, Jimmy Ward. 33 years old, final year of his deal. So kind of like the Desmond King spot where you need uh, another safety to kind of go with Jalen Petrie, who kind of stays away in the back. So I think nickel kind of corner, s- uh, strong safety spot, and then the outside corner certainly. But I think that defensive tackle would be near the top of their wish list. I will add they were one of the teams that Keen Allen revealed that were in discussions for trading for him. That aligns because mm-hmm. your outside wide receivers and three wide receiver sets can be Nico Collins and Tank Dell. I'm not of this opinion. Part of football Twitter just thinks that Tank Dell should just be a slot wide receiver, and that's who he is. Cool. He's an outside burner who puts you on your heels and breaks off yeah. routes downfield. Yeah. I had saw wide receiver Robert Woods, 32 years old. Uh, John Mechie, they tried that project. I think they're kind of over that. Noah Brown's more of the depth behind the yeah. two guys you just named. So I also think that this, like, Lad McConkey, Roman Reed Wilson. Russell, Roman, I think Roman Wilson is like a worse version of what Keenan Allen kind of provides you. So I think that Roman Wilson would be a great spot. Okay. 
that does it. Uh, we will have another one of these in the near future. Hopefully you checked out all of the free agency videos that we have on the channel. Shout out to producer Weaves who helped put out like 20 videos, Crushed 21 it. videos Ooh. last week. Uh, insane stuff. And you all were impeccable, impeccable for watching every single one. And again, be in the lookout. Prospect profiles should be on the way. We watch tape. We isolate traits. We show you uh, what we saw via what happened in their actual games. And those should, should be on the way very, very soon. So hit that subscribe button and that thumbs up and we will see you all next time.